listen to this incredible message, listen to what Cheryl has to say to us, listen to the worship, enter in to everything you're hearing. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you. And I want to say again, you have wonderful people here who serve you. I watch them in the midst of negative degree weather taking care of those that were desperate and less fortunate, reaching out to their neighbors. It's been a, it's been a real blessing to watch it. It's been a blessing to see how we operate in the midst of this. God bless you. Shalom, everybody from New Jersey. I'm Cheryl Price. That Chuck, thank you for asking me to share this word that God gave me the other day in my quiet time. I really feel like it is a word for all of us at the, in this season. I'm reading about the life of Moses, and I saw the other day how there were six key people in his life that God put there to help him along his process to become who he was to be. And it made me think and look again about the people that God had put in my life to take me to where I needed to be. So I want to share that right now. Out of the book of Exodus chapter 2, um, we see that a king arose that did not know who Joseph was. And he began to mistreat the Israelites and he brought them into hard slavery and it was a very difficult time. It, it, they, he was cruel. He was um, a king that they say historically was afraid uh, that he was going to lose his power. So he began to bring a tighter grip into his realm. And part of that was slavery. So during this period of time, he began to fear the Israelites. And he said to the midwives, when the Israelite women are having their babies, if it's a boy, I want you to kill it. Now, this is what's interesting. Uh, the midwives mentioned in the scripture in Exodus were Pua, and her name means to glitter, to be brilliant. And the other one's name is Shipra, and her name means brightness, one that garnishes, one that shines. And so the Bible says that they did not obey the king's commandment because they feared God. And when the children were born and they were boys, they did not kill them. Now, this is what God spoke to me about this. The foundation of their, uh, the foundation of what they chose to do with these baby boys was not a foundation of they hated the king, they didn't like his reign, they thought he shouldn't be there anyway. The reason they obeyed God was be, because they had a foundation of the fear of the Lord. And that speaks to me of the day and age we're in. We're never going to like every leader that is in over us in our country. We're, we may not like some of the things and may not do them. But it has to be out of a foundation of the fear of the Lord and not rebellion or hatred or our own pride. And these, and these midwives moved out of the fear of God. The scripture says that because they did this, God gave them houses. And what that means is they personally prospered. They had children. To prosper means to have sons, to build sons. And God prospered them because they moved from a foundation of the fear of the Lord. Many of us are called to be midwives in different stages of our life. It's not a gender specific uh, job. It is, a, it is an assignment from the Lord to bring to birth the next move of celebration, the next move of deliverance, the next move of prosperity, the next move of God. We are called to be those that come alongside of people that are giving birth to the new. Who knows that you may not help deliver the new move of God, or you may not, or you may help deliver the next deliverer for our country. And so that's something that we need to consider along the way. Are we 
needing midwives around us, or are we a midwife? The next person God showed me was Jochebed, Moses' mother. Now, she got pregnant with this child during the worst time in, in Israel's history in Egypt. Aaron, who had been born three years before Moses, was spared this edict from the Pharaoh and was not killed. But by the time Moses was conceived, this law had gone out into the, into the land. And she birthed that child. And the scripture says that both she and her husband looked at this child and saw that he was a goodly child. They saw the favor of God on this little baby, newborn. And we need to be able to see this in our lives. We need to be mothers and fathers that see the favor of God, the goodness of God, the glory of God on what is being birthed brand new in the earth. It may be a person, it may be a ministry, whatever that would be. God, give us eyes to see that, on the see your goodness on what is infant. Um, and the other thing that, that amazed me with her was that she denied her motherly instincts and her motherly desire to nurse that child and to raise him. And she put him in that ark and placed him in the Nile River full of crocodiles, you know, knowing that if somebody found him, they could kill him because he was a Hebrew baby. But she so subjected her own desires, her natural desires. If you've ever had a baby, I remember when I had my first baby, I didn't even let anybody else babysit him for, for five or six months because I, I just was afraid that someone else couldn't care for him like I did. She cast him into a river after, after having him for three months. That's a big deal. And so she was able to do that. And because of it, um, like Isaac, given back to Abraham at the place of sacrifice, Moses was given back to her for five to seven years by the princess to nurse. And so I just think that when we, when we can put our own desires down of what we want or what we think is really ours, God's going to move in a great way. Uh, the next person is his sister Miriam. Um, she was the lookout watchman. Miriam was stationed at the bank of the river in the bulrushes to watch this little ark with the baby in it to, to make sure everything was okay. There was crocodiles there. The Nile River is full of crocodiles. But there they were, the baby in the ark and Miriam in the bulrushes watching it. But this watchman watching over this baby was also a lookout. And, you know, Chuck's been talking to us about the lookout watchman and that anointing that's coming. Miriam was so looking out that when the, the uh, Egyptian royal entourage came down the Nile River bank to bathe, she saw them. She was looking out to see what Egyptian would come along her way to prosper them. That's what I think. God had placed that in her. Um, she look, was looking out to such an extent that she discerned the movement of compassion on the Egyptian princess when she opened that ark and saw the baby weeping. That was a gift of discerning of spirits. From, from afar, she saw that gift of compassion move on that princess. And she had the right question at the right time. Do you want me to go find a Hebrew nurse to nurse this baby for you? I mean, when we are lookout watchmen, we're not only, we're not only watching over what, we're, what we need to protect, but we're looking out at what God is bringing our way to prosper us. Miriam's gift prospered her entire, entire family and caused a dispensation of grace to come over that family because they were paid to care for Moses. That's an amazing thing to me. So watchmen, uh, look out watchmen, you will cause people to prosper. 
This princess uh, was an amazing woman. She was the only surviving child of Pharaoh. The, the, his two sons had died, so she was the inheritor of the throne. She had no children and no husband at this time. And in the Egyptian culture, if you were the next one, the, a woman and coming into power, you had to have a son uh, to be able to come into power as the queen over Egypt. So God was also working on her behalf at this time. Her name was uh, Thermutis, Josephus, the Hebrew historian says. Um, although she was a non-covenant person, she was a woman of great power and wealth, and her heart was stirred with compassion for, for this crying baby of an enslaved culture. Um, listen, David found a starving Egyptian, which helped him recover all that had been lost at Ziklag. We need to see these people in our life, even if they're not a Christian. God sends people our way to prosper us along our way. Um, the, rabbin the rabbinical writers, some of them say that she was drawn to this baby when she opened the ark because of the Shekinah glory that was shining and present around Moses. The Bible doesn't say that, but uh, the, the Hebrew writers do. So her ability to place Moses within the top governmental, economic, and educational system of the world at the time prepared him for his future of leadership. Now, it didn't negate what God needed to do in him for 40 years in the wilderness, but it set a foundation in him. May we find, may we find the Egyptians along our way to help put that, help put that in our lives. Then we see later on in Moses' life, his brother Aaron was sent to him because Moses didn't think that he could speak properly. So God sends Aaron, speaks to Aaron in a whole different country and says, you need to go find Moses in the wilderness. And they meet in the wilderness. Sometimes God puts ministry associates with us that can better communicate the vision that God has given us and maybe gifted us to do, but somebody else can say it better or communicate it better. Or I know with visions and, and revelation, sometimes I get visions and revelation, but there's always somebody else that can communicate that better than me. We need to look for those people. And lastly, there was Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. And he... He cared for Moses for those 40 years that Moses was in the desert. He gave him his daughter as a wife, brought comfort to him, helped him sustain his future with sons, built his future with sons. Um, and we see later on that he was a man of great wisdom and even helped Moses set up the judicial system of the entire Israelite nation. So these were six people in Moses' life that helped form the foundation of his life and helped the process that God had for him to become the deliverer that he is, that he was. And, and friends, I believe they are going to be discerned in our life this year. And some of these gifts are you. You're that gift in my life. You're that gift in someone else's life. Be all that you can be prosper in every way. Every gift is given so that we may all prosper. I bless you on Shabbat. I hope you got something out of this. Amen.